Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here with the next video. Today we are talking about the bat spell, specifically that bat spell dragon attack strategy that's been working so well recently. And is it still something you guys should be considering doing? Is it still working? Does it suck now? Was it a one-time thing or is it here to stay? So we're discussing all of that in this video with replays. This applies to Town Hall 10, 11, and 12. Although today's replays are only Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11, but I think that's okay because that's the main Town Hall levels we're seeing, and you can still apply these same concepts to Town Hall 12 as well. Um, but to answer the question posed by this video, yes, it's still a viable attack strategy. But the difference is now you have to choose the right base for it. Um, it's not going to work against you know 90, 95% of bases like it used to. Now it's like any other strategy. It has to be the right base. Um, and it's like a hog attack where if there's certain things you use hogs, if there's certain things you use balloons. Now if there's certain things you use the dragon bat spell attack strategy. Take a look at this. A wizard tower and then four air defenses. Um, I see what the defender's doing here, putting that wizard tower there to try to defend those air defenses. But that is the wrong way to do it. And today we're also going to talk about defensively how you want to set up your base so this is not an option for the attacker. Because it's much easier now than it was pre-update. I have an anti-bat spell, anti-dragon video. You can go back and check those out. But I'll also be addressing kind of post-update uh, in this video what are just some very simple things you want to do defensively to make sure this can't be used. But in this case, the wizard tower uh, was pretty much useless because there was a freeze, a rage, and the bat spells. And that combination just destroyed that. The wizard tower was frozen the whole time, then it got taken out. So it does nothing against the bats. They take out all four air defenses. And when that happens, it's pretty much GG. The dragons finish things off. We'll fast forward here. Um, we'll take a look at some Town Hall 11s as well in just a moment, and then some more Town Hall 10s. Um, but yeah, there's, there is a certain way you want to defend it. And I might uh, wait until another attack comes to kind of show you guys what I mean by it. Because it's not as simple as putting a wizard tower or a multi-inferno smack in the middle of what you know your air defense farm looks like or whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to some of our attacks from this war. Um, number 10 here. This one, uh, was this, sorry, this is not the right number. We want to look at number 7 first, I think. We'll work our way down. Um, this one did not quite go for a triple, but I think it was a, a good base to use it on regardless. You can see here, no splash damage in the area initially, so uh, the bats can overpower these uh, areas that don't have wizard towers, don't have multi-infernos. They get those air defenses, they get a few expos. The freeze was unnecessary, the bats were not going to do much anyway, regardless of whether or not that uh, wizard tower was frozen. So that was a little bit excessive. Um, but I think the value is not bad because it's not just what he gets, it's also the funnel that's made, um, which allows these dragons to kind of go through. The heroes are used up top. This is a pretty good textbook uh, deployment in terms of having the heroes wrap around the top at the same time as the dragons. That way they last a lot longer, can take out a lot more buildings to help the dragons stay in the middle. Um, this just came down to the wire, and I think in the end, having the single inferno right at the back end with those wizard towers was tough. Um, just not quite enough juice to make it through, but you guys will see what I mean here. Um, everything moving through. Unfortunately, these single infernos do um, some work on his his dragons, but I think the uh, that was a great tome. Uh, you know, helping things out. The uh, the single inferno doesn't get much value on the front end because of that. Then these uh, dragons do have to go against that air sweeper for a little while, but they'll push through it eventually. And then from there, they get the eagle and start to cut across the base. But um, that's how you want to do it with these heroes. You drop them at the same time. That way, the heroes are basically moving at the same speed as the dragons, so they're going to last so much longer. Otherwise, they'll die really quick. Then the entire top of the base would not have had the benefit of a funnel. The dragons would have wandered everywhere. So here, we did a great job keeping everything focused. The heroes are up, you know, as some of the last troops are as well. Um, and it's just the single inferno just destroys his dragons on the back end. And they can't really do anything about that. Can't use a bat spell with those wizard towers there. So... Very, very close. Nice try here. Um, really came down to the wire. I mean, look at that single inferno. Uh, does go down, but this archer tower, uh, and actually the wizard tower, is what, what keeps this from being a three star. So very, very close. Um, that was a good example of a good base to use it on. <clears throat> uh, number 10 as well here. Um, you guys will see that the back end is actually pretty friendly for this. And I'll go ahead and get into what I, the point I wanted to make defensively. 
and that is when you're trying to defend this, you, the one thing you don't want to do that people often do do is they put a wizard tower, a multi-inferno, just right on the, the area that the bat spell is most likely going to be used to try to stop it. But the way you want to think about it is the attacker is going to always get one free building when they drop their bat spells because they can use a freeze, a rage, and then the bat spells right on top of whatever the area is. So whatever's there, be it an inferno, a wizard tower, is going to go down without doing any damage. That's why you don't want to put these buildings in a good spot for the bat spells to be deployed. Instead, you want to put them off to the side where they can still do a good job covering and containing the bats, but if the attacker drops the bats on that location itself, it's going to not be much, uh, not going to be a great value. A good way to do this is you have a wizard tower, a multi inferno, uh, kind of a little bit off to the side, but still guarding that back end where air defenses likely are and where the value likely is for the bat spell. Then you also, um, a little distance away from that, also moving away from your air defense area, you have another wizard tower, a multi inferno, whatever guarding that defense. So if the attacker is going to try to come directly on top of that one defense that's guarding the back end, they're going to freeze, rage, bat spell, but the defense that's guarding that defense won't be frozen. So by doing this, you're not quite putting these anti-bat defenses directly where the bat spell is likely to be used. You're putting them just nearby so they contain the bats. You're, they're only going to get one or two air defenses and they can't do that cheap freeze and deploy directly on top of that defense because if they do, there's not going to be a whole lot of value. That won't be a good place to deploy. Um, so moving along here, um, some more Town Hall 10s for you guys. Um, number 13, and we'll see some, some bases that defended, some bases that didn't. Um, these next two are some pr are very good bases to use it on. and. I mean, this is a, a great type of base where it's completely separated in terms of having the wizard towers on one side, the air defenses on the other. That's the, the main separation you want to look for. Also, the multi-infernos do cover those air defenses, but um, he's just going to use the bat spell for the back back end because the dragons um, can push quick enough to get towards those multi-infernos on their own. Um, I like the two lava hounds cutting across, soaking everything up, tanking, distracting. Um, I thought that was a great play. And then Rage, Bat Spells on the back end right away takes out those air defenses. And yes, the Multis will get a few shots off on those bats, but they're being tanked in large part um, by the dragons. And because of that, um, they're able to grab one of the air defenses. The other one still stays up because the Inferno had a, a few spare uh, inferno streams, but it does go down eventually to some of the bats that came up. So this was not a good base because everything was so separated, um, even though the infernos did have some reach over the back end, because if the attacker can come from one side, they can tank a lot of those defenses that are going to counter the bats, and then the bats will be deployed right as those defenses are being tanked, and it won't end up good for the defender. So uh, when you're building your bases, you do have to uh, Kind of look at these dragons from all different angles and the what the back end looks like and if there's an effective place for them to drop the bat spells or not all right um number 14 just two more replays to go here um this was another good base to use it on and um this was well my point will kind of be made uh in just a moment about what i said about defending this and Defense goes hand in hand with offense. So when I say don't do this defensively, then if you see a base that has that, you know what to do because I told you why not to do it. So um, and if offensively um, I'm giving tips, you know defensively these are the things you should be trying to defend against. So uh, in this case, okay, he has the multi-inferno on the back end. So he's probably thinking, oh, I'm good. I have this multi-inferno guarding these two air defenses. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it's a one spell space to bring a free spell, and that's all they need to basically shut down that multi-inferno. Now, if the multi-inferno was in a better location, um, this would have worked out better. And if there were wizard towers like here and here, then it becomes very tricky because they would probably have enough range to be able to take out some of those bats spawning on top of the multi but they can't be frozen. It's too much to bring three freezes, plus the bats aren't going to even go to those wizard towers for a little while. So that's the kind of things you want to have, is um, these 
uh, pairs of uh, anti-bat defenses that make it difficult in, in totality to take out that area. So just having the singular defense, especially right in the place they want to deploy anyway, all you're doing is making them bring an extra spell, which is the freeze. So don't do that. It's a common, common mistake. Um, and then this this base is crushed. Uh, bats, because of the nerf, you don't have to worry quite as much about them just tearing the entire base apart. But for very uh, localized areas, they can do a lot of damage um, if you set it up that way, which unfortunately was the case here for the defender. Um, so we'll fast forward to the end. Uh, Stone Slammer, once again, getting an appearance here. And take a look at one more. Um, number 20... Um, this one was, I think, a failed attack. I, I honestly just glanced. At, yeah, this was a failed attack. Um, and we'll see why here. It's just a little trickier now because check this out. Um, well, I'll, I'll wait till the dragons are deployed so you have some context as to where the attacker is coming from. So here we go. Uh, heroes are down. Uh, dragons are about to be placed, I believe. Very typical uh, type of funnel here with the heroes on either side. Um, and then here come the dragons. So as we start to see this attack develop, you might be able to see the issue here because look at the back end for a second. Um, Wizard Tower, Multi-Inferno. These are defenses that I guess you could argue maybe here you, you can deploy bat spells, but this Multi-Inferno especially, I'm a huge fan of where it's located. Because for the attacker coming from that direction, we'll just talk about that direction. You have to consider multiple directions when you're building your base as to where the dragons are going to come from. But just coming from this direction, the dragons aren't going to get that multi-inferno very easily. The pathing into it is poor, um, unless a lot of them curl down here. Uh, but there's also hit points around here to make it difficult. So if the, the uh, attacker wants to use the bat spell on the back end... They can't just drop it right on top of these air defenses. The Multi-Inferno would destroy it. Also, the Wizard Tower on the other end, which is nice. Um, but if they drop it directly on the Multi and freeze it, who knows where the bats are going to go? Plus, there's this Wizard Tower here. Um, it might go down eventually to those dragons, but for now, there's a Wizard Tower as well. So it's really complicating things because there's no easy, like, Multi just sitting right in the middle back here to freeze, rage, and bat. Um, it's off to the side, which makes this a lot trickier. Um, it's isolated, which is what you want to do with these uh, these multi infernos. So, uh, dragons coming through goes ahead and uses the bat spell farther north, which is what I thought uh, might be a better idea. But here we have the wizard tower raining down. We have this multi, which basically has this air defense protected too, for the most part. It's right on the edge of it. Um, but there's these, uh, as I said earlier in the video, there's these splash air defenses that are just right on the edge of that area and you, you guys know what the area is that people want to use bat spells it's where there's your air defenses your cannons things that you know will get destroyed by bats that's where they want to use them they want to get those air defenses taken out so here we go wizard tower doing work on these bats it, it will i think go down actually or no it doesn't even go down it's pretty effective against them not totally effective but it has you know a relatively wide uh, splash effect when it shoots so the bats are unsuccessful really uh, all they do is get like one air defense and a bunch of cannons but uh, this base will hold um, and I think it's a good base a good example now you have to like I said take a look at the base from other angles as well I guess this base was symmetrical so that makes things a little simpler but coming from you know the opposite side would it be a different story? That's something that with the uh, defender would have to look at. But I think in this case it wouldn't because the air defenses are all up top here. So the attacker is typically going to want to come opposite the air defenses. Not many people use dragons going directly into all four of your air defenses um, unless it's just really simple to get them taken out. But that's not the case. And this was a good example of uh, defending the dragons. So I hope this video helped. Um, the, the main point is yes, it's still a viable strategy, this dragon bat spell attack. But it has to be used against the right base now. And if you're a defender, there's relatively simple ways you can defend it, as I went through in the video, without having to sell out too much to just defending that one strategy. So it looks like it's going to be similar to Hogs, Laloon, Miners. Uh, it's, I think, relatively balanced, which is good. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you guys later. Bisectatron out.